Why am I failing so miserably today? Hello Nuggets, welcome to the Food Chuck. My name is Ruka. And today we are doing episode 5 of Disco Elysium. Now before we go into the recap, I would just like to make a quick announcement for whoever uh, has not heard about it yet. Uh, but this month I am moving to a different location, very, very far from where I currently am. And so I need to take basically the entire month uh, to focus on the logistics of my move and uh, finding a new place to park the food truck and such. So I say that because maybe in the next few weeks, um, the Disco Elysium playthroughs and even streams won't be as frequent. I don't have a regular schedule for streams uh, for the rest of the month right now. Uh, they will be on a guerrilla basis. And the Disco Elysium playthroughs might be limited to one day a week uh, for the next few weeks. It depends, though. It depends on how fast I get through these playthroughs and edits. Uh, it's just uh, a lot of stuff I'm trying to get together right now to prepare for the move. That aside, holy crap, <laughs> we had a lot of um, progress in the last episode, and I can not be any happier with it. So let's start from the top, though. Let's start from the top. So we had to find a way to get into the harbor, right? Uh, but the only way to do that was to either get through Measurehead or basically get through Measurehead one of two ways. And the physical way didn't work. Uh, we didn't do the ideology route. Instead, we tried to sn sneak behind and see if there was a third way into the harbor. Did that successfully, might I add. And we met Evart, the the union leader for, for the dock workers. And I got to say, Evart's uh, quite the character. He seems friendly enough. However, you do know... Or at least you feel that in every single word that he's uh, speaking, he is trying to trap you into doing things for him and showing that the police is on his side for whatever crooked things that he might be up to. But we were not going to be falling for it for the most part. Uh, it will be a give and take situation right now. He is helping us with getting the body down on off the tree, finally. And he did do just that. Now we do have a question about the missing gun. And we may have to come back to him regarding that. Hopefully it doesn't come to that. But who knows where that gun is right now. We still don't even have our badge. Now I do remember uh, as I was looking through the previous playthrough. That maybe there might be something in our pockets. But we haven't had any... What do you call this? Uh notifications on whether or not the badge was in the pockets of our coat that we left hanging on the railing back there. So there is that. Uh, but yeah, autopsy went very well, as well as finding evidence that the hanging was not actually a hanging. It was basically the guy was shot and then hanged to cover up that shooting. So there's something else going on here, and it may not just be a simple uh, union thing. It might be there might be another third party. We got we did get a little information that there's probably some rowdy people in the dock workers union that we might have to keep an eye on, and uh, yeah. But as far as the actual getting the body down off the tree, we are finally there. We got it done and now we have a dilemma <laughs> we still don't have money for tonight so i'm thinking if we can't sneak into our room for tonight uh we may have to ask someone for money we didn't take the check from Ev uh evart for the 25 real so we might have to ask someone a little bit more trustworthy for that and I have just the person in mind if we have to go that route. But first things first, we have to secure a place to sleep tonight because it's been a full day. It's been a full day and uh, Gart is not going to be happy if we don't have cash before we go up there. So yeah, 
let's uh, let's go and see what our sleeping situation is for tonight and uh, what else might be in store for us. All right. This time I actually saved somewhere in the spot where we're supposed to be. Okay. What's going on here? Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Hmm. Probably can't call the station for money. I know they don't like that from us. Yes? Uh, let's see. Tell me about the case again. What do you want to know? Now that we inspected the scene, I want to know more about this pissing competition you mentioned. Oh yeah, that was right. What's there to say? It's just stupidity. What kind of stupidity? The cop kind. Our precincts can't decide if Martinez is part of Jamrock or the Industrial Harbor. Yours or mine, as if we somehow own parts of the city. Typical street gang mentality. So we've let the Union make a mockery of law enforcement here. And now it's come to its natural conclusion. I see, because uh, the, the RCM is basically a militia, not off official law enforcement. Um, there's a thing about jurisdictions that gets mixed up. I think that's what, the, what he means. Well, sort of. It's less a matter of who gets to police Martinez than who has to. It's an orphan district, in other words. I see. A struggle and who runs Martinez. I think the dispatch desk just told both our stations about the hanging. There was quite the brouhaha at the 57th, I can tell you that. Time to settle it, they said. Cop off. But I assure you, I am not their finest or toughest with 102 cases solved. <laughs> what I am is least interested in a pissing competition. <laughs> so he's working with us because he has to. 102 cases solved? You know, that's not bad. That's not bad. That's still re very respectable. Um, okay. So he volunteered to represent the 57th, but not out of competitiveness. On the contrary. Saw you volunteer to spoil it? Uh, what's special about Martinez? I wonder what this says about me, that I was sent by my station. Hmm, so you volunteer to spoil it. Yes, I am an unrepentant spoil sport. <laughs> the lieutenant appears pleased with this. What's special about Martinez? Martinez? Nothing. It's just a puddle at the end of some drain pipe. No one cares about this place. They care about sports. Most of our colleagues don't even know how to get here. North of the interchange doesn't exist. A tremble comes over you. Another after effect of ethanol poisoning, perhaps. Feels like leaves do when they rustle in the breeze. Somewhere far away, below the turbine. The 41st and the 57th. The lieutenant was right. It's not about who gets what's north. It's about who doesn't? I see. I wonder what this says about me, that I was sent by my station. Hmm. He raises an eyebrow, thinking it best to let you make the next move. There can only be one conclusion. I am the finest. A case-solving machine sent to outperform me in every way imaginable. I don't think so, considering uh, how he was treated by the station. I must be an augury, an apocalyptic omen sent by my people. Can you guess my message? Don't be scared, but I think I might have supernatural abilities. I probably have unbelievable... have I probably have an unbelievable kill count. No, not with three. I'm just gonna leave why I was sent unspecified. I think we know why. They just wanted to get rid of you. But the supernatural abilities? You know, that's probably true considering our immense luck so far with a bunch of stuff. So maybe, maybe. And also, our mind's talking to us all the time. But let's just say unspecified. I'm gonna go with that. The silence carries. Uh, okay, enough of the competition then. Tell me something else. Yes, it's a wholly pointless matter. Forget I ever mentioned it. Okay. Wait, 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 what? Yes? Why did the f 41st send me? Why check? Look at you. Okay. It's because you're a failure. Ah. Uh. They sent you to Slight, Precinct 57. What? No, that can't be right. Yeah, that makes more sense than the other stuff I thought of. <laughs> Just think about it for a second. 
You're a raging alcoholic who showed up three days late wearing piss-stained disco garb. You weren't sent here to win. Yeah. Why did my priest sent me on this case because I'm a fuck-up? Like, as a joke. Keep it to yourself, not... Let's just be open with Kim. He's our partner for now. I've considered it. His voice is somber. So it's true. But it's not true, right? So it's true. It would be immensely ugly of them. Not to mention unprofessional. But I also think it's somewhat unlikely. Why is that? I checked the records. This jurisdiction dispute, through Policies Martinez, reaches back to the 30s. It's as old as my station. And all this time we can't decide who gets Martinez? I think, yes, both stations would prefer a win. Huh, so you are their finest. Do you really see me as a safe bet? Hmm. Do you really see me as, their sa as a safe bet? Safe? No. But you're old. You've made it this far. Something has brought you through. We've only just started working together, so I don't know what it is yet. But it's there. Yeah, it's definitely there. Definitely. So no, I don't think they sent you as a joke. And even if they did, they are in for a surprise. <laughs> no kidding, I'm surprised. Uh, alright, well... Let's try to sneak into a room, we gotta wash our hands. It's, um, really bad. Don't talk to Gart. Ooh, it's disco time! Who's this? Can we talk to these people? <clears throat> no, but... Inside you catch a glimpse of Union par Paraphernalia, a strike poster, and some other stuff that I couldn't read. Can't talk to you, can't talk to them, they're kind of busy. Ah man, I kind of want to sing karaoke now, but... Let's just sneak into our room really quick. I, I need to... I need to wash my hands. <laughs> Might as well keep Gart uh, preoccupied. Let's not talk to him. Wait, what? Don't I have the key? Don't I may change the lock. Came to room num key to room number one. Does not work. We're opening it. No? Okay, well then, that's not gonna work either. <clears throat> we gotta talk to Guard. Ah, jeez, we gotta talk to Guard. I was afraid this was gonna happen, that... Despite my best efforts, I can't get in. Can I help you? Ah, uh, so about the money I owe. Yes. Have you got it? I do not. How much do I owe again? A lot. For the room and broken window, a hundred real. Okay, let's actually talk about something else. Like what? I was really enjoying talking about the money you owe me. Let's just make his life miserable right now. I'm gonna sing karaoke. Absolutely <laughs> out of the question. Why? Absolutely in. The question. Of course. <laughs> First we find a sad banger. Then we sing this place to shit. <laughs> I'm actually we're in on this right now. Your body is ready, sire. Ah, uh, goodbye. Okay, we have no room for tonight. Um How much cash are the bottles gonna get me? I don't think it's gonna be enough, but how much cash are we going to get? Okay, we have no place to sleep tonight. We're going to be a hobo for tonight if this keeps up. No, oh, she's still the here. The machine stands in the corner. Your bottles clunk into the machine and the money appears with a satisfying jingle. That's not a lot. 60 cents is not a lot. Okay. Let's see. Okay, we're gonna keep the plastic bag on us. Maybe have a flashlight because it is uh, nighttime now. Anything to raise my 
suggestion. Oh, this increases shivers. Esprit de Corps, Half Light, Endurance. Um, let. Let's. Okay. I didn't want to resort to this, but we may have to ask Joyce, the rich lady, for some money. I don't know if she'll give it to us. But she's really my only safe bet right now, because I don't want to ask random strangers here. But Joy seems to be intent on helping us with uh, investigations, so maybe it's a possibility? Time to beg a little bit? I don't really like begging, but... We may as well give it a try. Also, it's a good opportunity to report about Evart. Let's see. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? I've talked to Evar Clear. You have? And how did you like Mr. Clare? She smiles carefully. Uh, he was quite the jovial fellow, but definitely sneaky. Finally. Time to choose sides. Wait, why is that physical instrumentation? Okay. I didn't. He's a beautiful man, beautiful and just. Hmm. Evar Clare is a hero of the workers' movement. He is a champion I've sworn fealty to. He's a bloated rainbow socialist. I can do business with him for a, a socialist. Uh, for a socialist, he's reasonable. He's not the champion I have chosen. I wish to swear fealty to you and the cause of capital. It's not important if I liked him. I was just doing my job. This is the most neutral response, but let's see. I don't know. He's a bloated rainbow socialist. Um... Now, the thing is, I don't know if he's actually a socialist or not. Now, the overtime pay and medical, uh, like medical insurance stuff was good. I don't know what else he wants. Well, then he he wants the board thing. Now that's out of the, that's a bit out of the line. I feel like, but I can do business with him for a socialist. He's reasonable. I feel like. Of course, he must have his practical uses. How else could he have kept his position all these years? Or wait, actually. Actually. He could have kept it with corruption, fantastic, verm-like corruption. That reaches into the bowels of the earth. <clears throat> she looks at the ground and nods in agreement with herself. The RCM does not pick size in this, madame. I hope it doesn't come off any other way. Of course. And I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I'm not a corrupt verm myself. <laughs> However, if you felt like discussing something... Well, he did give us a green light. How could I stop you? Are we not human? Are we not curious to hear another person's take? It's only natural. We would only be... gossiping. <laughs> right, gossip. Intellectually speaking, it would be quite interesting to hear what she has to say about these things. I agree. Tell her. She'll like you for it. Um, Mr. Evard is helping me find my gun. Oh. That's so helpful of him. Yeah, her eyes become large and round. The lieutenant looks at you, and you can swear his jaw muscle is trembling. He's able to contain the anger and surprise. I probably shouldn't have told you, huh? Unconventional police officers sometimes lose their guns. They then go around and tell people about this to gauge their reactions. It's all part of detecting. Thank you, Kim, for the cover. Incredible. Simply incredible. And how is it going? Has this detecting produced a gun? No. Well, maybe he's not as helpful as you thought then. Is there anything else? I'd rather talk about something else for now if you don't mind. Of course, detective. Should something come up later down the road, don't be afraid to drop by for a chat. Until then, is there anything I can help you with? Okay, time to ask for money. Let's go. You seem rich. Can I have some money? Is what you want to say, but it isn't that easy. 
is it? What? Why not? Look at that lady. Take a gander. Squint your eyes, bub. What nice fabrics. What lustrous hair. Uh, fabrics says money. Why, yes. Tucked away under that sturdy green raincoat, almost rustic in its simplicity. A silk shirt and matching scarf around her gentle throat. While dull orange pearls hang from her earlobes, red from the cold. Her light green eyes scan you, full of knowledge and worry. Wealth and all its possibilities. These are the kind eyes of the rich man that seem to say everything is possible. Okay. Within reason. Yeah, so? Now look at you. You misery-clad simian. Barely able to tie your own laces. Your armpits are lakes. A scythe of booze precedes you. Your hair <laughs> sticks to your forehead and your underwear feels uncomfortable. Yeah, I probably haven't changed him in three days. You're poor. Poor as balls. You can't ask this person for money. You're too... Ashamed? I'm not ashamed. What is this feeling? I've never felt it before. I'm a goddamn working man. I'm not ashamed to shake this lady for some dough. As I should be for even considering it. This is a woman and I'm a man. Yes, I should make my own goddamn money by now. I wish. But <clears throat> I am not ashamed. Let's go. Oh, but you are. Too ashamed to ask this person for money. Too scared to belittle yourself in her eyes. Those half-precious stones of Erdenil. Let's do it anyway. As I was saying, if there's any way I may be of assistance, please don't hesitate to ask. Okay. Let's ask. Volition looks good right now. Let's go. Please don't fail. I am sorry. It just doesn't come out of your mouth. What does is money. Excuse me? I didn't hear you. Did you say money? No, I didn't. Let's talk about something else. Oh my gosh. Of course. Put skill points into volition to open this white check. Okay. We have points still. Where's my volition? Let's go. Let's go. I think we have to exit. That's all for now. Let's try again. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? Let's go. I am sorry. It just doesn't come out of your mouth. It uh, does, is. Excuse me? I didn't hear you. Her voice is kind and a little hoarse from the wind. What she meant to say was. Thank you. That's all for now. Can I try again? You're back. Good. What can I help you with? It's locked. Ah, I even put points into it. Is Do I have anything that might increase volition? No. Uh. Well, we're sleeping on the streets today. <clears throat> hey, Kim, can you take me to wherever you live? Uh, that would be nice, wouldn't it? What am I gonna do? We're sleeping on the streets today. And I can't wash my hands. It still reeks of death. Okay. Well, we're in trouble for today. Looks like the old guys are gone for for the night. Good for them. Mm, the bookstore is closed. Good for them. The only thing I got is a bench. The damage looks like it could have been caused by an earthquake. Oh, you're talking about the the fault there. Wait, I saw some posters um, just outside. Okay, I don't want to ask her for money, but let's see what she has. Hello again, sweetie. 
Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to. I I mean, I'll ask the rich person for, for money because she said she would help, but I fail. Where's my lucky rolls? My lucky rolls are gone today. You see a heavy steel door. Okay, that's still closed. Let's see if there's anyone upstairs that might be able to help us. Look, even if I have, even even if I took uh, the check from from uh, Evart, I still wouldn't have been able to. I'm just surprised I can't get in. He, it's it's like he changed the locks or something. Why would he do that? The door is closed. All right, maybe we can room with this person. Knock knock. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on, somewhere inside. A tremendous loneliness comes over you. Everybody in the world is doing something without you. I'm so alone. Why are you doing this? Don't do this to me. Beauty, don't abandon me in all this ugliness. Swallow the emotion. Ah, uh, swallow the emotion. The door is closed. Knock again? Still no answer. Knock again harder? Still nothing. The lieutenant gives you a quick glance. You should punch a fucking hole in it. Fucking whore. Punch the door. Suppress the urge. We are not punching the door. The murmur in your ears recedes slowly. Your breathing normalizes. I'm That's not... one lucky door. I'm not going to open the door. Uh, just because Kim is with us. If, sh if I was alone, that'd be fine. But then again, she's probably going to come out naked, right? And... It would be awkward for the both of us, I feel like, if I did that. Okay, well... Let's try to ask the station again for money. Inside. You see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Uh, let's see. Reconnect to 41st. Right. Then for come in. Uh, Fireworker. Over. Okay, no option for money. We'll drill that. 10 10. Over and out. Okay, we're sleeping out here tonight, and we really don't have any leads for today. No, and there is one. Uh, the lead for... What do you call this? Um, to talk to the person in the apartments. That's, I think, the, our only thing right now. Oh, who knows here. I was going to see if I can sleep in this shack for tonight, but if this is Kuno's shack, maybe not the best place. I'm just thinking maybe not the best place to, to crash. It's night, we gotta sleep. What are we, what else are we gonna do at this time of day? I I mean I guess the other option is to sleep in the <clears throat> in the dock worker's office. Is that an option? I'm leaving the bench as a last resort. But it may as well be a first resort if all things if it comes to it. Okay. Let's go through here. What's this? A giant aspirin on the pillow and a pattern of coffee rings on the armrest. Someone is habitually chilling next to the radio. That's probably Leo. The already familiar cold touch of plastic welcomes you as you pick up the handset. Even if I called, who would I call? We don't have any numbers except for Sylvie, and Sylvie is definitely not going to help us today. <sighs> it's the bench for us. It is the bench for us. Let us sleep. And, uh... 
it's the next day. Do things the next day. We got nothing else we can do right now. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bench do not look overly comforting. What other choice do we have? Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. Let's go. You can revisit the bench if you ever need to pass the time when Lieutenant Kitsuragi is gone. Yeah. Um, you know, let's look at the, our to-do list. Find out who is in the Union box. Guard told you that some unruly Union men, men gather in the mess hall, uh, but they never showed up. They're not there today, but most likely tomorrow. Call Alice back in the day. There's still time for that. Photo. Armor. Lost Bull. Pay for damages. We have not yet. Uh, badge. Still haven't found the badge. Clothes in the trash. No idea. Mm, this case needs an official name. Inve go to your inventory. Interact. Okay, I guess I'm... I guess I'll do that for now. Get that off my list. We didn't give the case a name, so I suppose it's time. Oh, this is the bullet that we got. RCM evidence 18823. The bullet is safely sealed away in a plastic bag bearing the RCM stamp. Kim has filled out the label on the bag with the item number, case number, and date and location the bullet was found. What do I do with you, Bullet? What? I said, what do I do with you, Bullet? Well, if I was the Bullet, which I'm not, I would say, find the weapon that shot me. Good idea. If we find who owns it, we will have likely found who used it, possibly to kill our victim. In conclusion, the more we know about this Bullet of yours, the better. Feel the bullet through the bag. The squashed Bullet has some sharp edges where the jacket has split open. It feels cold, even through the bag. You wouldn't ordinarily have cause to handle jacketed bullets. The citizen's militia uses cast bullets only. Little pebbles of metal loaded from the muzzle, usually in a cartridge. Let's see, inspect the bullet closer. The jacket of the bullet is made of a yellowish metal. It has blossomed out to reveal a dark gray core. The base of the bullet is close to five millimeters in diameter. Look at the jacket. You can just about make out a few strations near the base of the bullet. Little hairlines, linear. It feels standard. And the core? It's quite destroyed. Some of the fragments are still lodged in the wound. I see. What can you say about the bullet so far? Uh, wow, I actually know this. <laughs> it's a jacketed bullet, close to five mil... 5 mm in diameter. A jacketed bullet. Okay. It would have been shot from a military grade breech loading rifle, not from a muzzle loader like those typically found on the streets of Martinez. Really? Military grade? Highly unusual. The people of Revachol haven't carried breech loading weapons like this for nearly half a century. Rene? Did you have something to do with this? Even the RCM uses ordinary and jacketed conical bullets. This is strange. Very strange. I like this, officer. Strange means unique. Unique means incriminating. We need to find the gun that shot it. Let's see. Encyclopedia said this came from a breech loader. Try to determine what type of weapon shot this. Well, may as well give a shot. You can't yeah, remember what so. happened last week. What makes you think you're going to remember arcane firearm models? Hey, it was worth a shot. Bull has nothing more to say. For now. For now. Damaged ledger. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hanging from the board. With the permeables drawer inside. Browse case files. It's barely files. held together by a clip. Then made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Arson. Petty theft. Spousal abuse. Handwritten logs on dozens of investigations date back to January 51. Stamped case files. Commit to paper. These are your last couple of months in Revachol. Precinct 41. Jamrock Quarter. Kim, I'm sorry. Let's name this case again, okay? Fine. For inter-district cooperation, let's try one more time. What do you want to name it? The Hangman. Great. 
That's great. That's actually what I was thinking too. The Hanged Man. Good, strong name. We have a very good name for the case now. Okay. I'm going to start calling it the Hanged Man. It's good to be sorted this out. Skill point. You know what that means? We can ask Joyce again. Uh, I'm done inspecting. You don't exactly close them. So much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. Look at the clipboard. It's made of dark blue plastic, hard enough to beat someone to submission with. The edges are rounded, however. The U4 size board feels thick and heavy in your hand. Light shimmers on its wet surface. On the back, you see the embossed letters RCM. Shake the ledger. Something rattles inside, ever so lightly. Is there a hidden compartment? Is that where my badge is? And something small inside. Light, made of paper or cardboard, or dried flowers, perhaps. My badge? Permeables. It's not hidden, per se. The compartment is made for permeable materials that would get damaged if something happened to it. Peek inside. The plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli. It's my badge! It is not see-through. You cannot see to its center. How should I open it? With your hands, you four sized pages hang from the clip, screwed to the top of the board. Lonesome long way home minus one? Why? Why? I'm pretty sure that's my badge. It's gotta be my badge. Let's give it a shot. Please work. Is not what you end up doing. You squeeze the plastic to slide it open, but nothing happens. Then you bend it some, then crack it. The goddamn thing is stuck. A hot flash of rage comes over you. For a moment there, before it recedes, you feel as though you might just squeeze a tear of anger out of your duct. It makes you wonder, why? It's my badge. The ledger quivers in your hand. As it shakes, the pages rustle. This pathetic mess suddenly afraid of you for some reason. Okay, we're gonna get our badge later. Gotta remember what point that is, but for now, we have to. We cannot. Um. Crap. We don't have enough volition to talk to Grace. Uh, to, not Grace. Joyce. And. Ah. Uh, okay, no money asking. Back. Back to this thing. Back to this thing. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A cabbage of paper. Inch, uh, from what is the board it? Interfacing. The permeables draw inside. It's barely held together by a clip. Then made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. All right, interfacing. Let's go. Let's try that again. It's the ledger you found in the trash. Round two. Let's a go. Garbage of papers hanging is still not what happened. Fuck this compartment. You should throw it away. Ah, <sighs> my badge is in there. I just know it. Why am I failing so miserably today? Is this a universe? Is this the universe? Um, like make it like bouncing itself out from my awesome rolls last time. Is that is that what's happening? I don't think I remember seeing this area. Plastic wrap macaroni stamped with humanitarian aid. Humanitarian aid, tuna fish, not for resale. Okay. Speakers uh, from the people of Samara. You see a Samaran street vendor surrounded by a motley assemblage of goods. When he realizes you're looking at him, his face breaks into a wide, welcoming grin. Oh. The name Sileng is embroidered over his breast pocket. Happy shopping, officer! Everything's cool here! He gives you a thumbs up. What's so cool? Everything's cool! <laughs> The goods are cool, the customers are cool, the place is cool. And one more thing, officer. From out on the bay, a cool wind gathers. It sweeps into the city, tugging at the textiles hanging around the stand. Some distance away, the sound of a tin can clattering across the street can be heard. You're very cool. <laughs> 
Bang, 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 bang! He makes both hands into finger pistols and fires a few finger bullets into the air. Really, you think I'm cool? I'm not cool. Whether I'm cool is unimportant. I have police questions for you. Really? You think I'm cool? You know, let's just humor this guy. He seems uh, friendly enough. And uh, maybe Kim has an effect on him. Let's see. Let's just humor him. Oh, yes! You got style! You got personal style! You know what you like. He surveys his consumerist kingdom with an air of satisfaction. You like premium menswear. <laughs> Look around and browse. Everything looks cool on a guy like you. Take your time. He settles back into a pile of boxes he's sitting on. Don't be distracted by the flattery and funny man act. Questions. What kind of stuff are you selling here? Uh, food packages you're selling have humanitarian, humanitarian aid written on them. How come? Where are you from, Ceiling? Rhetoric. Persuade him to give you some money. Let's start with the other stuff first and then maybe go for... I, I, I need to beg people for money at this point. Let, let, we, we're going we're gonna to beg. Only the coolest goods in Revachol. I've got sneakers, speakers, extremely comfy pants too. Try them on right here. No shame, only freedom. Where'd you get those comfy pants? Do you have a permit to sell all that? Is there a discount for cool officers like me? That's all then, let me ask you something. Where'd you get those comfy pants? I'm an entrepreneur, officer. I've got sources, buyers, suppliers, distributors, <laughs> manufacturers, wholesalers, all extremely cool and above board. I'm wondering if he's uh, skimming off his, what do you call this, um, supplies. Do you have a permit to sell all that? Uh, I don't really care. Is there a discount for cool officers like me? No need for discounts at ceilings, officer. Everything's <laughs> already on sale. Anything you want, 50% off. Wow. But did he first mark them up 100% just so that he <laughs> put them on sale? Yeah, are those re things really on sale, or did you just jack up the prices first? No use prying. There's really no use prying. Yes, it's a business secret. Let him keep it. Okay, let me ask other questions. Anything for you. The food packages you're selling have humanita humanitarian aid written on them. How come? You mean these delicious pre-packaged shelf-stable meal kits? Really easy to cook, no hassle, really cheap too. Buy some, try them out. No hassle. There's a little of a hassle here, it appears. A moral hassle. Doesn't that be the idea of humanitarian aid? It's supposed to be free. That's what makes it humanitarian. I think no one's... I think one said not for resale on the packaging. Don't play games with me, Hawker. What's going on? Okay, well, if they're delicious, it's okay. Uh, I think one said not for resale on the packaging. No problem here, officer. I get all this from one of my suppliers. An extremely reputable guy. Wait, Humanix, humanitarian aid. Does your supplier drive that Humanox lorry over there? Point the lorry with a big Humanox sign on it. And who is your supplier exactly? Let's try that. Let's try the first one. What? The street vendor looks over his left shoulder and stares at the lorry, as though he's never seen a lorry in his entire life. A convincing performance. Bravo. <laughs> Look, officer. I'm just a retailer. You'd have to talk to my supplier if you got questions about the supply chain. That's how the game works. All right. Interesting. The lieutenant whips out his blue notebook and makes a note. Or if you're from Sealang, I wasn't going to ask this, but I think it's, uh, it's relevant now. Me? It's a boring story, officer. Who cares about the past? I'm all business now. All Revachol. This man probably comes from Sea Guy, sometimes known as the Apricot Suzerainty, an archipelago in the Samara Isola. You were the Apricot Suzerainty, right? But you're not a local, are you? Better not m to mention. Sounds good. Let's get back to business then. Very cool. I like your style, officer. Plus one humanitarian aid macaronis. Persuade him to give you some money. You know what? You're gonna. You're gonna try to hustle me? Let me try to hustle you a little bit. No need to dress this one up. Just tell him what you want. What the heck? What the heck? My luck is really bad today. <laughs> what the heck? 
You, I want your money now. Oh, okay. But why, officer? His face suddenly is serious. Because I'm, I'm corrupt? I don't really remember how it works, though. Being corrupt, I mean. I don't know. It was just the only thing I could come up with my head. To ask you, I need to get money. Somehow. Ah, because I'm corrupt? You know, let's make a convincing performance. Because I'm corrupt. Ah, yes. Lots of cops are. The street vendor nods dead serious. Are you trying to ask for a bribe? If so, you're not doing a very good job. <laughs> he looks at the vendor. <laughs> Sorry, detective. The man grins as if the entire incident is already forgotten. Okay, well... Ah, uh, well, I'll look around, thanks. Ah... Uh, food gift from the people of Messina. Uh, helpline to the company that controls the drawbridge. Oh, okay. Hot air rises from the sewer, sour as acidic and strangely comforting. What's here? Oh, bottles. It's okay, so no bribes from him. Ooh, we got... How come I didn't see this area before? Gloves. Electrochemistry. I don't trust electrochemistry, I'll be perfectly honest. But we can probably play the hobo now. Roy's Pawn Shop. Fast cash for faster time. So I have anything worth selling? Uh, postcards, happy couple, Kim's handkerchief, but I don't really want to do that. Not a whole lot to pawn up. Did I open this? I guess I did. What's here? Water lock out of order until Wednesday, 7.15 a.m. Who are Evening you? Evening, officers. Man on water lock. A burly man hangs out by the water lock, carving up a generous serving of salami with an old hunter's knife. His eyes are <laughs> fixed on a man stranded on the other side of the water lock and on an enormous billboard that has fallen down into the canal between them. His posture is relaxed. Despite his powerful build and a knife in his hand, this man resorts to physical intimidation only infrequently, if at all. First things first, what are you doing here, man on the water lock? Do you know what caused this wreckage? Points to the smashed billboard in the canal. I didn't even notice that. Well, let's try the first one. My friend Barry the Butcher is stuck on the other side of the water lock. I'm mm. keeping him company and eating this salami. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. From the corner of your eye, you see a man in a yellow shirt and gray overalls waving at you from across the canal. He seems disappointed about the wreckage on the water lock and the salami. I would be too. I would be too. Very good stuff. Anything I can do for you, officer? The man on the water lock picks the skin off a slice of salami and takes a sizable bite. Do you know what caused this wreckage, uh, the smash billboard in the canal? I wasn't here to witness it, but those look like tire tracks on that sign. Weird, huh? Then again, plenty of daredevil drivers in Rivershall. Too bad it also takes a year and a day to repair anything <laughs> round here. Especially a water lock. The rest of the coast is closed off till then. Do you know what's further down the coast? Uh, can I have some of the salami? Points of this food. <laughs> well, there's the fishing village, an abandoned fish market, a bizarro church. Oh. Not much use to the congregation, though. There always seems to be something wrong with it. He thinks for a moment. Yeah, not really much else. Just bombed out ruins. Can I have some of that salami? I'm kind of curious how it tastes. Sure thing. Ooh, thank you. It is salty. It is savory. It is chewy. The hangover only makes the salami more tasty. Want some too, officer? He turns to the lieutenant. Why not? Oh, he actually takes it. <laughs> I'm surprised. The lieutenant ponders the offer for a moment, then decides to go for it. He takes a slice of salami for it from the man and chews on it. All right, bye. Well, what's this thing? A couple of indicator lights are missing from this control panel. Loose wires dangle from the now vacant holes. In the middle is a lever. Beneath it, a small metal plaque. 
This panel usually closes the waterlock, turning it into a bridge that lets you cross the canal. But there's a crashed Samaran butter sign in the way. Pulling the lever probably won't do anything. Give it a try. Let's give it a try. You pull the lever all the way up until the metal clicks against the contact pins. You hear a soft clunk. Then nothing happens. Push it harder? Nothing happens. A cold gust of wind blowing in from the sea interrupts the silence of the situation. Mm -hmm. The lieutenant humps himself while staring at your activities. Kim, stop staring, please. It's embarrassing. Release the lever. The spring brings the lever back to its original position. You still need to close the waterlock to get across the canal. Some other way. Wasn't there a sign over there saying functionality will be restored on Wednesday morning? Yeah. I saw that, but I figured I'd just give it a shot. Butter sign down. Oh, what's this? I can't click on it. Alright, well. I guess while we're at it, let's check the pawn shop. Yes? No, 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 no. The pawn shop. Ah. What's here? Some kind of machine, an antique cash register? In a dark in the dark, a film projector is whirring away. Bust of a woman, the plaque simply says D E I. You see rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the trinkets displayed on the table. Some on horseback, others in rags, others yet in bright blue uniforms. All are stern and unyielding in their duty. Let's see, let's inspect the knights on horseback. Big men on big horses, clad in lamella armor and carrying flintlocks. The kind that would mow down a line of enemy soldiers in the blink of an eye. Point other knights on horseback. Who are they? Franco-Nigerian knights. I used to be very serious about these guys. Oh, he used to be a collector. He looks at the dusty figurines in the dim light. Inspect the blue uniforms. They're not all blue. These figurines also wear gold coats and caps, complemented by orange trousers. They are variously posed, wielding swords and rifles with bayonets. Wait, this looks like Rene, the old guy who was playing Petank. Point the blue figurines. What exactly are these? Uh, yeah, it looks like Rene. This is what the loyalists looked like, yes, at first. Then they wised up and got camouflage. <laughs> what, are, what exactly are these? Which ones? Oh. Ah, royalist soldiers from the time of the revolution. The uniforms are painted a bit too brightly, I suppose. Bird's Nest Roy. Inspect the figurines and rags. This set of soldiers isn't meant to look impressive. A few have rifles, but most of them carry pistols. Some even shovels and tall sticks. Uh, point the figurines and rags. Are these even soldiers? You're probably talking about the revolutionaries, yes? Yes, they are soldiers. Revolutionary soldiers. The man behind the glass answers. I think their poverty has been exaggerated for effect. When you place them next to the Royalists, it doesn't seem like they could possibly win. It's meant to give people hope. Even we can do it. The contrast is meant to be disheartening, as it ought to be. It is impossible to win against the cohorts of capital. Ask my friend Gart, whose bitch it made me. Ah, uh, I wish it was more nuanced. As it stands, I cannot comment. And it is impossible to win against the cohorts of capital. Ask my friend Gart. Yeah, I need money. Okay. I don't like either set too much, to be honest. <laughs> he doesn't bat an eye. Okay. Uh, dig a really cool figure in the back. Why? What's this? A headless man riding a horse. A headless man wearing futuristic tracksuit trousers that save found. What is this? Show it to the shopkeeper. Oh, that's the Headless Phone Rider. Who? Oh? The Headless Phone Rider. It's an urban legend. About a man who rides the streets of Revachol sporting a phone tracksuit. As you see, he's missing his head. He points at the decapitated figurine. Fifty cents. 
Bargain price. I'll throw in the tiny cap too. I think he's looking for it, or something. That part of the story has many interpretations. Yeah, I don't really need one right now. He lost his cap when he lost his head. Perhaps he's looking for the head. Yeah, step away from the table for now. We don't really need that. We need a hundred. Oh, uh... We should think about calling it today, maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. I haven't paid the cafeteria manager for damages yet. You should take care of that, then. I don't have the money. Let's talk to him anyway. An officer of the RCM shouldn't be sleeping in the street. We'll figure something out. Okay. Well, if you say so... Maybe we can cut a deal. I'm hoping we can cut a deal. I was trying to beg around for money, but I guess that didn't work out, huh? Looks like even this guy went away. The gardener is still here. Why is that? Let's see, what's this? Pay for damages, negotiate. Find the murder weapon. Uh, let's see. Close the water lock. I'm guessing I did quite a bit of stuff. Yeah, I mean, we did quite a bit of stuff last time, but today so far has been fruitless. Absolutely fruitless. Can I help you? It's about that money I owe. Yes, have you got it? I was wondering if we could come to some sort of arrangement for tonight. Does that arrangement include you paying me what we already agreed you owe me? I will pay you back tomorrow. I'm an honest cop. It's cold out. I'll freeze to death because I'm losing some, losing the stupid money game. Come on, man. After everything I've been through. Kim is about to say something. Let him. Yeah, let's uh, let Kim negotiate for us. I understand your predicament as the manager. However... He adjusts his glasses. I feel I must remind you that we are here to conduct an important investigation that also affects your business. Well said, Kim. Forgive me for saying <laughs> this, but your colleague seems more committed to drinking and... I haven't drank a drop today. What are you talking about? He stops mid-sentence. I mean no offense. It's really nothing personal. I just have to protect the interests of this establishment. Uh, hold on. I still have my key, you know. Good luck trying to use it. He taps his foot against a metal box installed at the back of the counter. Yeah, he changed the lock. Draconian measures. All the locks have an electronic component. They have to be unlocked down here with a master key before your guest key will open the lock. This conversation isn't going anywhere, is it? Not until you bring me the money. Okay, I might have something in my motor carriage we can use when you're done here. Oh, Lieutenant. We're done here. Kim! Please save me! I don't want to sleep on the bench tonight. I mean, I wouldn't mind. I got I got a coat and whatnot. It's totally doable, but... There are people who want me dead. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out... I have something here we could sell. Look in the back, in the suspect transport enclosure. Transport enclosure. Regular people just call it the cage. Uh, okay, let's look into the suspect transport enclosure. The cage at the back of the motor carriage looks rather uncomfortable. Four shiny hubcaps are stacked against the seat. The silver edges sparkle in the dark. Hubcaps? I confiscated this for a little while back. We can take them to the pawn shop down by the Martinez Canal. What are those things? What do you mean you confiscated them? You said something about pawn shop? Thanks, I appreciate your help. Uh, sorry, I can't take them. It wouldn't be right. Uh, what are those things? They are spinner hubcaps. Frivolous things you put on your wheels. When the wheels come to a stop, the caps keep on spinning. There's no real <laughs> use for them, it's just for vanity. Uh, yeah, I've seen those things before. I did what? And people also have some spikes on their tires to make them look more intimidating. Uh, that's... Yeah. Uh, what do you mean confiscated? A couple of weeks ago, I stopped a young man for going slower than the speed of traffic. Turns out he was some coalition official's son, and hi. Slower than the speed of traffic? You can get pulled over for that? So you took his spinners? Isn't that corruption? 
I get it. I would have confiscated them too. They're mesmerizing. So you took his spinners? Mm -hmm. I took them and arrested him for driving under the influence. Okay. I get it. I would have confiscated them too. They're mesmerizing. That they are. I was going to take them into evidence, but they weren't necessary for conviction. He never asked for them back. The lieutenant looks at the spinners and sighs. Um, did you want to put these spinners on your machine? <laughs> he probably did. No, no, that, that would be silly. I just... He hesitates. I don't know why I kept them. It doesn't matter. I couldn't put them on this MC anyway. A cop with spinners. That would be outrageous. Yeah, outrageously cool. Yeah, it's too wacky. Too wacky. Uh, yeah, outrageously cool. He flashes <laughs> a smile, barely visible in the dark. I'm sorry you have to sell them because of me. It's only right that we sell them. I'm sorry you have to sell them because of me. As I said, they're useless anyway. I should have remembered I have these earlier. Uh, you said something about a pawn shop. Yeah, we were there a little while ago. Yes, the bird's nest, Roy. Near the canal. We've been there. If I'm not mistaken, it should be open late. Good to hear. Items that can be pawned at bird's nest, Roy's, appear in your inventory under the items tab. You can pawn these items when talking to Roy. Thanks, I appreciate your help. The lieutenant nods as you take the spinners. Thank you, Kim. You have saved me from sleeping on the streets tonight. I owe you a lot. Kim has been a really nice uh, partner in this whole ordeal. I appreciate everything he's done. Keeping me in line, making sure I don't say too many stupid things to people. <laughs> uh, and now, selling hubcaps. It is great. It is great. What's this? A typical Martinez streetlight sits among assorted floor and table lamps. Let your gaze run over the streetlight. The light pole has been carefully cut, and the wiring has been redone and attached to a standard indoor plug. The light buzzes faintly, but persistently. This would make quite a statement in your living room. Is that a street light? Where'd you get this? How much for the street light? <laughs> uh, there's nothing you need to know about the street light. Uh, let's just ask, is it, is it a street light? Yes, officer. As you see, it's in perfect working order. His manner is casual, but his speech is careful, measured. He wants you to know that he has nothing to hide. Where'd you get this? It was brought to me to be altered. I see. We are not here to investigate the theft of city property. Yeah, it, 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 that wasn't my intent. I was just curious. I'm sorry. He leans in so that the pawnbreaker doesn't hear him. You have to admit it's rather clever what he's done with it. He pauses, studying the light. Uh, okay, well, nothing else about the street light. What's this back here? Mostly military wear with a few eccentric fashions thrown in. Wow, a very large red t-shirt with an impressive print stands out from the other garb. Oh yeah? Oh yeah, the print depicts a muscled man striding toward you. A giant sword in each hand, ah, sky encircled again. by burning embers. Behind him is a cluster of cabins engulfed in flames. Beneath him are the words, Hyomdal burning. The antlers on the hood of the man's cloak and his piercing blue eyes are familiar. Sniff the t-shirt. What's the deal with this man on the t-shirt? How much are you selling this t-shirt for? Curious. Two real. That's dirt cheap. Couldn't you just give it to me for free then? But why? <laughs> uh, because I'm a broke cop without a cent to his name. Perhaps I could repay you some other way. Uh, I guess I can't really think of a good reason. I was just curious. You'll just have to buy it then. But it's not like it's expensive. Minus two authority, plus one shivers, plus one physical instru instrumentation. What are my stats right now? I mean, physical instrumentation is nice. Where is it? Sure. It also increases shivers. Um, but it does make a th my authority go down, which is not very high to begin with. Uh, let's let go of the t-shirt, but it is uh, quite curious. What's up here? The boom boxes on the shelf look well loved and well traveled. Chipped, dented, they stare at you with the unblinking eyes of their tape reels. Stand on the tip of your toes, Seymour. One especially catches your eye. 
Deep gold and amber plastic with a big old handle on top. A classic boombox that says, Stereo 8 approved. Just make sure it works before you buy it. We're not gonna buy it, I'm just curious what it is. Shopkeep, the Stereo 8 approved machine here. What I really want to know is, could this device come handy in my police work? Are you sure that it's all in working order? Let's try number two first and then go for three. Actually, no, let's start from the top. Is the Harman Walshi W2. Made in Vespa. Designed in Seoul. Plays all reel-to-reel -reel formats. 2mm, 8mm, 12mm. It's even got a little radio in there. It'll set you back 12 real. Ooh, I don't have that much cash. What I really want to know is, could this device come in handy in my police work? If police work means playing tapes, sure. You can use it for that. Or any other time you'd need to play a tape. Are you sure that it's all in working order? Absolutely. I've tested each one myself with recordings of speech. Found sounds and music from a variety of genres. Even <laughs> though... I don't really like music. Really? You don't seem the type. Okay, let's actually sell something now. I got distracted. It's not often that I see officers from the RCM in my pawn shop. The man at the counter turns to you slowly. What can I do for you? We got hubcaps. His courtesy is not insincere, but he prefers being alone with his projector, just watching the movement of light across the walls of the shop. Sorry, I feel like I'm interrupting you. Shake your head. It's shameful how insufficient the police presence is in these parts. Now that the RCM is here, tell me, have you had any trouble lately? Uh... Sorry if I feel like I'm interrupting you. I don't really want to cause any trouble. We just hear you sell some hubcaps. Oh no, not at all. I guess I haven't had many customers lately. RCM or otherwise. He flashes a smile. Who are your customers, usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake. People <laughs> who are terminally bored. <laughs> As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. Quite the collection, I may have something to add to it. Look around, typical vicious, uh, commun consumerist objects. Vacuous. Typical vacuous consumer objects. Honestly, I think some of your selections are... Press your finger to your lips. More tasteful than others. This business plan is all over the place. You should specialize. Zoom in. Recapitalize. Nah, uh, nah, it's fine. Uh, I might have something to add to it, though. It keeps me... entertained. His attention is drawn once more to the play of light and shadow on the walls behind you. Entertained? He might be high. If he is... On what? Uh, is Roy high? If yes, then what is he high on? I don't really care. I just thought, I just want to sell it. You might want to be. You might be able to aid our investigation. By the way, do you happen to have any guns like the ones carried by the officers of Citizens Militia? Let's try to ask that one first. Someone else came here earlier today asking the same question. I promptly sold her the gun you pawned a couple days back. Wait, what? I pawned the gun? Who has it now? What? Sold? That's what I just said, Half-Light. This is a pawn shop, and it did feel as if you've met before. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. The lieutenant shifts from one foot to another. Alert. Wait, I sold you my gun? Was the buyer policeman too? At least I know now how I lost my sidearm. I also know where my badge is, but I can't get it. Wait. I sold you my gun? You... Uh... You were adamant about getting rid of it, officer. Said you were undeserving of a service weapon of the Revachol Citizens Militia. Wow, he really wanted to quit. And I don't like keeping guns around the shop for long. Off the charts photon emissions. The unhealthy kind. Was the buyer policeman too? Doubt it, but let's ask. She didn't seem like a policeman. <laughs> although she kept referring to herself as a pig. Which was odd. 
I found her interest in the gun a bit... obsessive. But I was just happy to get rid of it. And of her. I have a suspicion that I know who this is. Is it Cindy? Does Cindy have my gun? Truth be told, she was terrifying. Right, so let me get this right. You sold your sidearm issued by the citizen's militia, and now a civilian is running around the streets of Martinez with it? There is only one explanation. She must be one of my rabbit fans. <laughs> I doubt. Maybe she's a vigilante, wants to prove she can do our jobs better than we can. I don't like it either. What if she intends to commit a crime and blame it on the citizen's militia? I'm sorry. I'm sorry I sold my gun. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I sold my gun. <sighs> yeah, it's not good. I do hope we manage to clean this mess up somehow, while also keeping our focus on the murder investigation. Okay, any idea where I can find this buyer? My apologies, officer, but I have no idea where she was coming from or where she went. Description. A needle in a haystack. There is nothing you can do about it right now. You'll just have to hope Everett wasn't lying and the Union can track her down in time. Have people from Everard Clear's Union come here to track that gun? Maybe. Shady looking guys came in here yesterday. Looking like they're just taken off their Wild Pines overalls. They asked if I have a police weapon to sell. I told them I already sold it. Crap they know. They went their way. It was a trip. But you know, all sorts of people come here asking for all sorts of things. Maybe Claire really is tracking down your gun. Hmm. The lieutenant's eyebrows rise slightly. People as oleaginous as Everard seem like they're lying, even when they're really being truthful. At least now I know how I lost my sidearm. Let's talk about something else. Of course. Wait, how much EXP do I have? 47 out of 100? Really? Well, we need... The next point we get, we need to put it in interfacing because I know my badge is in the clipboard. Uh, let's see. You might be able to aid our investigation. I doubt it, but I can try and answer any questions you may have. Know anything about the recent hanging? I do my best to keep my distance from all manner of butchery. Bad for business. Bad for everyone. Fair enough. He doesn't know anything. No one likes to see what you have to see every day. Actually, that's all I got. The pawnbroker's gaze is already fixed on the dancing colors. Uh, let's see. Let's... I wanted to ask about my uh, missing gun again. Sure thing. Okay, nothing new. Sure, man. Okay, let's add... There's something I'd like to sell. Yes, we'd like to sell these hubcaps. The lieutenant steps in and hands him the spinners. Roy takes the hubcaps from the lieutenant and inspects them. The spinners appear iridescent in the dancing light of his pawn shop. Yes, these are very, very good. Did you defraud some foreign <laughs> prince for them? Jump a mesk banger? No matter. I'll give you 200 rael. Wow, and here I thought we were going to have to haggle with him. That is a very fair price. I get my 100, him gets 100, and it's all good. No one was defrauded or jumped, I assure you. The lieutenant explains as a pawnbroker opens a register and counts the cash. Of course, I meant no offense. 200 real for you, officer. Delightful doing business with you. Do come again. I wonder if he's ever is gonna get a profit off of those. Thank you. Cause it's it'd be kinda hard to sell for even three hundred or four hundred real concer concerning the local people around here don't have that kind of cash. Maybe. Here's the hundred real you need for your bill. Do not waste it. The rest goes in his pocket. The rest is for him. To compensate for the pain of being separated from his radiant spinners. I mean, that is fair. I just need a hundred for tonight. Anything else you're thinking of selling? Uh, I'd like to sell my clothes. I'm not purchasing any more clothing at the moment. He looks you up and down quickly. I have a fascinating photo of a corpse here. Nope. 
I'll check my pockets. Access your pawn menu. Anything else you're thinking of selling? Empty cassette case. I don't want to sell Kim's handkerchief, at least not in front of him. Honestly, there's really nothing here to sell. Uh, close. Don't have anything to sell. Another time, perhaps. Yeah, another time. Hey, so we've been monitoring you internally, and now we know your copo type. Wait, there are copo types? Okay, where am I? Uh, there are copo types? Yes. Guess what's yours? Cool cop. Some kind of weapon cop? Sorry, cop. I'm not sorry. I'm not sure. I'm sorry you had to monitor me. Uh... Cool cop? No, you're <laughs> the sorry cop. The cop who's sorriest. Let's make it official then, shall we? Okay, but what are the other couple types? Um, won't the other couple types be jealous? <laughs> I'm sorry, opt-in. You know, actually, I'm not sorry. I changed my mind. Again, they should be sorry. Uh, what are the other couple types? Oh, you know. Apocalypse. Superstellar. The advanced interesting cop. Liquid Shadow Cop. But you're too sorry to say those things. So, here we go. Uh, won't the other copper types be jealous? What? Jealous of the sorry cop? <laughs> I think they'll be fine. Don't worry. Why is my suggestion doing this now? They'll be super, super fine. It'll be totally okay. You can dual copper type from sorry to anything. Really? Uh, you know I'm not sorry. Change my mind. I change my mind. No, you don't. Come on. You'll be back to saying sorry in two minutes. Stop wasting time and begin the repentance. You know, if we do the repentance arc, maybe we can clear our name up again. That's probably not a bad idea. Okay. Alright, I'm sorry. Let's opt in. Of course you are. It's okay. See if you can get something out of this. Like info or maybe every time you say you're sorry you get a million bucks that won't happen yeah i, I figured okay pay for damages okay what is this rigorous self-critique minus one authority embarrassment to the party uh research time six you're one sorry piece of shit a cop penitent a flagellant cop monk. This is not the right line of work for you. You should be groveling at the feet of a feudal lord, providing lurid evidence against yourself at a Ma Mazovian show trial, or ripping the flesh from your back with a cat of nine tails. Whatever made you this way, you can be damn sure it was your own fault. Do it. Really criticize yourself. Who knows? You might uncover something of importance from your guilt-ridden past. Can I internalize it? Unlock a new slot to research thought. Oh, I need a skill point for this. I don't have a skill point. Um, okay, well, I I thought I thought we we had some. All right. But I still am, I'm probably still going to put it interfacing the next skill point I get. Because we kind of need it. I kind of need it. I need the badge back. And then maybe we, we can internalize the... Sorry cop. Eventually. Alright, guard. I got your stupid money. Kim wants to go back home or at least some place he can sleep. He is walking in front of me. Alright, guard, here's your stupid money. Now let me in my room. Can I help you? How about the money I owe? Yes, have you got it? I have your money. Well? Here's the 100 real. Slam the bills down on the counter. I hope you choke up. Here it is, sorry for the trouble. We're a sorry cop, right? <laughs> I really want to just slam it down and say I hope you choke on it, uh, but it is our fault. 
And I kind of want to get on his good side somehow. Let's see if being sorry is good. Maybe. I doubt it. But let's try apologizing. Great. Thank you, officer. That's all I wanted. Payment for services rendered. If you continue to stay here, I just ask that you please pay your nightly <laughs> bill in advance starting tomorrow. How much is it? The electronic lock to your room has been disabled till 9 p.m. tomorrow. Please pay for each night in advance starting tomorrow. 20 real per night. I got 971. I should be okay if I don't spend too much on medicine. I'll take a room here too. He opens up his wallet. Of course. Always happy to have officers from the RCM as guests. Anything else I can do for you? He takes the money and hands him a key ring. No, that's it. Thank you. All right. Okay, I still want to get my badge. So we are going to level this up. And we are going to interact with the... It's the letter you found in the, the clipboard. Trash. A cabbage of papers. Please from the board, work with the permeable just written. Thank you. The two sides of the board are slightly misaligned, like a drawer that's come off the slides. All you need to do is bend the plastic on your knee slowly. The slides snap back into place. It should be possible to just, you know, slide the drawer open. Wait, somehow I don't want to. Fuck no, put the ledger away. No, slide it open. Without resistance or sound, the two panels move against each other. The compartment is now open. What's inside? I bet it's my badge. Two ticket stubs and a handmade postcard. Where's my badge? Pick up the ticket stubs. Two octopuses are smiling, reaching their tentacles toward each other in the colored pencil drawings. The tickets permit access to the zoo in Revachol East. The aquarium costs extra. These let you go there, too. Wait, where's my badge? Pick up the card. Thin wax paper has been glued to a piece of cardboard. Sounds like leaves rustling when you pick it up. You see violet flowers, floral patterns, patches of glue. Smell it. It smells of chewing gum. Apricot flavored. Huh, I was thinking it'd, be, it'd smell like trash, but this is not bad. A touch of cinnamon. The end of summer. You think the label says Tutti Fruity. Open it. Familiar handwriting lines the inside of the card. Looped, round letters in a woman's hand. Is that our ex-wife? A young woman in her twenties. There is care, effort, and a smile, you think. Although that is not something you can read from someone's handwriting. Young woman in her 20s this is either from our past or this is our daughter. Harry, it begins. You're already reading. I wanted to write you a letter so you can read it when you wake up. Maybe it will make you happy. Okay, this is his uh, ex-wife, I'm guessing. Throw it away, please. But it will make me happy. Keep reading. Your hand shakes holding the card. Every morning when I step out and you're asleep behind me, it says, I find a little piece of sadness in me. I carry it in my chest, down Voyager Road. Every step I take, it grows. By the time I reach the fuel station, it has filled me entirely. I step onto the light rail and look back. Sparks fall from the bow collector. I know it will be like this until late afternoon, when I get off the 42 and walk back to you. Wait, what? Keep reading. You, you. Every step I take will get lighter. It almost makes me run. Sometimes I do. I can't believe I met you. I can't believe the happiness I feel with you. You have a vast, vast soul, and I will always, always, always come back to it. Keep reading. Kisses, kisses, kisses. You feel the air sucked out of your lungs and the blood sucked out of your head. Everything around you gets dark. Small white dots appear. You feel the ledger slip from your hand. What? No, no. Hold on. Hold on. To what? There's nothing. Kim's here. He can. I can hold on to him. Detective, is everything all right? Fall sideways. I guess we fainted? 
before we got to the room? Oh, I probably should have done this in the room, shouldn't I? Wait, what? What happened? Did I game over? What's this? Begin? There is nothing. Wait. What just happened? Again. Nothing? Nothing, sad brother. No treachery. Just blackout. Just lie there passed out. Well, almost nothing. There is the ground below you. That's still there. And the small light that's on, fluttering. Somewhere in the basal ganglia. Who's that? That's me. Blue eyes, that's me. And who was that? Who was what? He speaks of the sickening longing. The unwell emotion. Even in the darkness he's grasping for it. Still trying to hold on to the great sorrows slipping in the water. Slimy. Yeah, that's the stuff. No, I was cool. I'm cool. The cool when you're dead, brava. Here in the paleomammalian cortex, we call it the shadow. The shadow? No, you're not me. Because it's always there. Tell him. Tell him. Tell me what? Ah, yes. In the old factory system, they call it the apricot chewing gum scented one. It's unhealthy of them to linger on it so. But as they say, what do you do? Smelled so nice. Smelled like betrayal. It smelled so nice. Betrayal? It didn't smell nice. It smelled like betrayal. Was that the X-something? The... Where is Voyager Road? So my name appears to be Harry. Enough, just lie there, emotionless. No, we already know our name is Harry. But was that the X-something? Bloated corpse of the past resurfacing. Yes, that. No, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Beautiful. Believe me, stupid ape. Its lack of beauty was not the problem. Where is Voyager Road? There is no Voyager Road. There are no roads, no houses, no lights in the windows. It's all on. Pause. So my name appears to be Harry. Yes, we established this, but I guess we gotta go there. Your name is Farquhar. No, it's Harry. It certainly ain't Harry. Then what is it? Your name is passed out on the ground, dragged around by one of the other evil apes. They're taking you somewhere. Kim, please take me to my room, disheveled as it is. Enough, just lie there motionless. You think they would let you? Until you disintegrate into biomolecules? No. Someone is breathing on your face now, inspecting your pupils, stupid idiot. I'm not coming back. What is that? It's cold. Yes, they're pouring something on you. It's in you. And it's... It's water, right? It's delicious. Glowing lights on a dashboard emerge out of nothingness. Where am I? In the upholstered cabin of Lieutenant Kitsuragi's motor carriage, seated in the driver's basket. The air is thick with leatherworks and heavy fuel oil. Cold water runs down your chin. It looks like I lost about 20 or 30 minutes? Drink. Water. The lieutenant is extending a small canister to your mark, into your mouth. Uh, drink. The water is cold, silvery, the stuff of life itself as it pours down your parched throat. The pounding in your head recedes. The darkness parts. Drink. You haven't drunk water in two days. Did you know the human body is not made to survive on alcohol alone? You need a secondary form of hydration. He tilts the canister. With greedy gulps, you down half a liter of cold water. 
Some of it spills on the driver's seat. The lieutenant pays no heed to it. Well, my HP is full. What happened? I should ask you the same. I came in contact with the burnt out ruins of the past, Lieutenant. I was dehydrated. It won't happen again. I... Fuck it. Start climbing out of the motor car. I should ask you the same. You were reading your paperwork. Then you passed out. I carried you to my kinema to take you to a hospital. Then you came to. How long was I out? Ten minutes, maybe. Okay. I came in contact with the burnt out ruins of my past, Lieutenant. Yeah, let's go with that. That does sometimes happen. He hands you the remains of your ledger. He replies with such understanding, it's as if the burnt out ruins of the past were an occupational hazard. Athlete's foot for cops. You dropped these. Are you okay to proceed? Let's solve this case. Just nod. Let's solve this case. Good. The Ledger of Failure and Hatred is a special item that can be used both as an interactable and a tool equipped in your held slot for skill bonuses. Find it under the Tools tab in your inventory. Ledger of Failure and Hatred. Huh. <laughs> Inlaid Empire Empathy, but no authority. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A cabbage of paper without resistance or sound. The two panels move against each other. The compartment is now open. Inside, you see two ticket stubs and a handmade postcard. Yeah, I don't think the third option is something we want to do right now. At least there's no reason to. I thought it's my slightly, ever so slightly. Difficult to breathe once you've done so. The drawer is locked. Blue ink drips from the white pages in your hand. Your hand shakes. You're flushed with adrenaline. I thought my badge would be in there, but okay, I guess not. Um, inlaid Empire, Empathy, Authority, Minus. I guess there are worse things. What's this? You need to find the 20 real to pay for your room at the Whirling Inn. It will be locked at 2100. As long as you don't have a free place to stay, you have to do this every night. Okay. And the new thing that we got, White Morning. Minus one authority, little guy gets further and further away. You see yourself from above. You're passed out on the blue tiles of the hostel room floor. Even from this distance, you can see your eyelids flutter. At the mention of what? A great white object letting out its sweet smell, like a lily of the valley. The little man's forgotten its name, but he still remembers the feeling. And look. He instinctively reaches out for the feeling's best friend, a bottle of Commodore Red. He puts on his disco clothes and gets smaller and smaller. May not want to internalize this the self-critique though yes but I'm starting to see that we may not want to equip certain skills unless for some reason it'll, it gets us to the answers of our past which white morning might I'm kind of curious about equipping that for later oh uh, lady's gone for tonight Okay, well, let's get up to our room. It's time to sleep. I'm guessing uh, he'll be in room number two over here. So I'm going here. This is the door to the room you redecorated. A little too much. Good night, Lieutenant. Just a moment. We should talk about our progress on the investigation. Let's go out to the balcony. All right, let's go. We did quite a bit of progress today. We finally got the body down. And we're kind of stuck from here, to be honest. The air outside is brisk. The lieutenant is silent for a moment. He listens to the traffic hum. Then... Now then, we should talk about the investigation. But I also feel you're a bit hazy on the RCM. Our role here, our rights, our jurisdiction, basically. 
He lights a cigarette. I didn't know you smoked, Kim. How do you think today went? So what are our powers exactly, the RCM? Say nothing, just look into the night. I didn't know you smoked. I have a cigarette every night when I go over my notes. It's something of a ritual. I see. Oh man, he looks so devastatingly cool with that cigarette. I think I might want to pick up smoking. Do you have any more cigarettes? How did you get so cool, Kim? Let's ask that. You mean this? This isn't cool. It's an unnecessary trial of will and unhealthy. The light of his cigarette illuminates a fleeting smile and flicks the ash. Keeping the habit within the parameters he's given himself takes a lot of focus. It would be easier to simply quit. Yet, were he to quit, he would lose the cool factor. <laughs> this man relishes his cool quite a bit below it all. All right then, the debrief. Yes, it's been a long and eventful day. How do you think today went? Well, we inspected the victim's body, so that's good. It was not easily approachable in that state, but we did it. I would say our initial inspection was very thorough, and we have solid leads to follow up on. Then you shot him in the chest, which wasn't ideal. But we did manage to get him down from the tree. So as they say, all's well that ends well. I agree. By not ideal, he means he can't believe he let you try that trick and would be angry if he didn't feel the outcome was partly his responsibility. I just want to make sure he was really dead. I admit, I was a little out of practice. I still can't believe I missed that shot. Being sober tends to help with precision. Anyway, we performed a field autopsy on the victim. We found some things we can really work with. Okay. Moreover, you found that the hanged man wasn't just hanged. He was also shot. That was some excellent detective work. And you managed to locate and pull out the bullet. So we can get ballistics, make of the gun. <laughs> all this is invaluable. Yeah, I'm a professional. No big deal. It was the least I could do, given all my past mistakes. Yeah, let's go with uh, the third one. We are apologists, apparently. The rest is up to the boys in processing. Maybe they will surprise us by doing their job for once. But I wouldn't count on it. Really? There's still work to be done at the crime scene, however. We mustn't forget that. Now, for the interviews. He takes a deep drag and looks at the city. That's my forte. Unlike most cops, I understand how important communication is in our line of work. My initial interviews, yes. We talked to some people. The initial interviews. I wish we didn't have to do any of the interviews. People are treacherous. The initial interviews, yes. They were, we, well, we talked to some people. Mm -hmm. Including Evart Claire. A daunting adversary, if there ever was one. And that went but very well. He wasn't particularly forthcoming with useful information, however. He's not saying much on the matter, because he thinks you could have gotten more out of Everard. I'm sure I can get him to tell us more. He's a tough cookie, that one. I'm a little intimidated by him, honestly. He has stuff on me. I'm sure I can get him to tell us more. Claire also helped you, how should I say, remember your name? That's a relief. Big relief! It's a very serviceable name, too. I don't know how I feel about my name, actually. I want a different name, one I haven't ruined yet. <laughs> uh, I want a different name, one I haven't ruined yet. You can look into the process of changing your name after we finish this investigation. Right. We talked to Joyce Messier, but didn't get any information from her. I have a feeling Joyce knows how dangerous the situation really is. We have to get her to talk to us. Agreed. If Kim is emphasizing something this much, it really must be important. Above all, though, today was exhausting. What's with all the running? You run a lot. Is that a standard Precinct 41 practice? No, I just like exploring. I have a really good theory about why you're running so fast, son. Just you wait until we get up tomorrow. I don't like to waste time, you know. My mind moves fast and the rest has to try to keep up. I'm training for a long distance run. I want to raise money for charity. <laughs> That's just how we roll in Precinct 41. I don't know why I do thi- I don't know why I do the things I do, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. Yeah, I don't know why I do the things I do. It's impressive, especially for a man your age. And in those hills. He nods thoughtfully, tapping his finger on his cigarette. Nice shoes, by the way. I like the green. Goes with the orange. He looks at your sna- He looks like your snakeskin shoes and smiles suddenly. So what powers- 
What are our powers exactly, the RCM? They're quite limited, actually. The power officers of the Revachol Citizens Militia exercise most frequently is imposing fines of up to 1,000 real for offenses, in accordance with an interdepartmental schedule. A thousand, why not more? Wouldn't that be an easy power to abuse? Yes, although indirectly, as citizens can always request records from their local station. Gotcha. Officers of the RCM have been known to take bribes of less than the prescribed fine amount. It undermines trust in the RCM. He frowns. Okay, what else? We can arrest people, of course, but rather than bringing someone in directly, it's preferable to serve a station cold slip. It prevents confusion and overcrowding. Wait, how can you be sure that the arrestee will show up? I see. And if someone resists? How are we gonna show up? You can't. Those who don't show up become fugitives, though, and have fewer legal rights when they are eventually caught. It's about power projection. Thus far, they seem to mostly show up. I see, and if someone resists? As you may have gathered from the fact that we are expected to carry a record of our kills, like the one in your watermarks, we are permitted to use whatever force is necessary, and strongly admonished not to abuse that power. Wait, so if I kill someone while on duty, what happens to the people we convict? And who makes all these rules? Uh, let's see, so if I kill someone on duty... You have to supply compelling evidence for why it was necessary to use lethal force. In these cases, your partner is usually your witness. I see. So, I mean, it's a militia, they got rules and regulations. Standard stuff. Despite not being an official police force. Not a good position to be in, by the way. Internal Affairs handles these cases thoroughly, by cross-examining you for inconsistencies. It is hard to cover for anyone, which is for the best. What happens to the people we convict? We don't convict. We arrest and send them to coalition government courts in Couron and La Delta. The prosecution works off our testimonies and records, which is why it's paramount to keep them. He taps on his coat pocket where he keeps his notes. And who makes all these rules? The coalition government and the moral intern more broadly. The RCM was formed by the coalition government to restore order in the international zone after the revolution. So we did. Now we attempt to maintain that order. No more, no less. His gaze is absently fixed on a window below th that just went dark. Or perhaps it is better to say we were allowed to form. It's a point of contention whether the citizens of Revachol or the coalition government founded the RCM. Let's say with the citizens of Revachol, let's say it was a coalition government. Say nothing. I got nothing on this. Silence. A great comment to such a conundrum. The moral intern, what is that? The Moralist International are the world's largest political organization. You know who they are. They have been running this place after the revolution failed. He pulls on his cigarette. If I didn't know, how would you describe them? I really don't know. That's how bad this... Uh, <laughs> that's how bad it is here. If I didn't know, how would you describe them? They're a union of center-left and center-right parties across the real belt. Our coalition government is just one of its many projects. They also run the ICP, EPIS, most intergovernmental organizations in the world. What do they believe in? What is their symbol? What do you think of them? I have an opinion on the moral intern, conclude. Uh, what do they believe in? What do they believe in? They are Dolorians. They believe they continue the humanist project set forth by her innocence Dolores Day four centuries ago. Others say they are just technocrats. Those others say they continue the humanist project set forth by Dolores Day. What is their symbol? Interesting question. It's a blue forget-me-not. Their motto is love, compassion, self-discipline. I think you can gauge what they want you to think of them from that. Something kind and usual. I see. Something almost <laughs> self-explanatory. Something even a little feminine, but in a strict manner. Man, electrochemistry, you are barely reliable. What the heck are you on? Something like the dark blue, serious color of the early night sky above. Who was Dolores Ray? Dolores Day. A historic figure? The author of the modern age? You will have to look elsewhere for opinions. The subject of humanism is too abstract for me. He thinks. What do you think of them? The moral intern are a fact. I try not to have opinions on facts until they change. 
and it doesn't look like that's about to happen. I see. I have an opinion on the Moor Lintern. Do you? The lieutenant arches his brow, then pulls on his cigarette. It's a slim white thing in his finger. Things are bad out here, points to the city. We need them here, giving us the right to police revokshaw. Uh, they've done an awful job here. Have you seen the place? This isn't humanism. We are stooges of the world's biggest bourgeois organization, protecting bourgeois rights. Mutters silently. Immigrants. Liberal kips. Fucking men are turning into women. On second thought, I don't have an opinion. Forget about it. Things are about out here. We need them here giving us the right to police. I've done an awful... They've done an awful job. <sighs> I don't know. One and two sound... Sounds like more of opinions, but... Is it really that bad out here? Minus the thing with the dock workers. Is it just Martinez that's bad? I don't know. Let's go with one. The police need to be here, at the very least. In fact, we would need them even if you didn't think that way. We are in what is called the twilight of international law. The laws we claim to enforce come from the MI. Without them, we are simply vigilantes. Actually, vigilantes is okay with me. Yeah, vigilantes sound bad. Maybe we should make our own law. <laughs> uh, probably not a good idea here. Actually, vigilantes is okay with me. No, but then again, it, vigilantism without any sort of rules. Well, they would be like internal rules, right? Your own rules. But just because it's your own rules doesn't mean that they're correct. Yeah, vigilantes sound bad. Sadly, it is what we already are to the people of Martinez. Most of them, at least, especially the union. Vigilantes. I expect our job here to prove quite challenging. He looks at the roundabout. The lights of the orphan district are reflected in his glasses. The red and golden orbs of the motorway sliding like pearls on a string from east to west as Revachal commutes back to the suburbs. Tomorrow is Tuesday. Monday is over. In 29 minutes it will be. Say nothing, just look into the night. The dying lights of the city shimmer below. Slowly. Like luminous clouds, they pass on his lenses. The lieutenant looks at his slim cigarette, contemplating the next drag. They really don't like us here. And the mouth on that kid, Kuno. Mm. It's different in land, in Jamrock, in the GRIH. Why are they like this? Yeah, Kuno's terrible. Yeah, man, Ku they are uh, Kuno S. It's our fault for leaving this place to the dogs to the Union, to the company, not daring to come here more often. It's like I told you, this place is an orphan, fallen between the cracks. And in Jamrock and the G-R-I-H? We run this city. West of the river is our land. He looks at the dark silhouette of the equestrian monument cutting into the night sky. It's incredibly hard. Human beings are... But we are in control, and it's worth it. The organization works. Our systems work. If they didn't, the city would disintegrate. He shakes his head. I hope our investigation will help improve the situation here. At least I do some good. We won't change anything here. I hope our investigation will help improve the situation here. At least do some good. Me too. But I wouldn't count on any drastic changes in our lifetimes. Agreed. He is very tired. But the dark circles under his eyes make him look younger, not older. Thank you for this. Yeah, it's getting very cold now. Let's go. He puts out the stub of his cigarette and looks to the door. Alright, Kim. Let's turn in for the night. See you in the morning, Kim. Okay. Oh, I can't pick up the bottles in my room? Really? Interesting. Okay, let's close the door. <laughs> uh, I'll sleep in the bed in a bit. 
Words fail to describe how rank the smell is in here. They should have sent a poet. What's this? I'm guessing that's his door. All right. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. Dig deep into your mind to locate the source of the expression. Attempt to stop the expression from happening. Use your chain cutters to fix the faucet. Stop steam from fogging up the mirror. Tool not in hand. Let's uh, let's fix that. Let's fix that. Is it something I should be doing? Questionable. But I'm gonna do it anyway. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. Let's try it. In it, your face. The faucet is quite terribly mangled, but you just might be able to twist its parts into place. You handle the chain cutters deftly, applying just enough pressure. The faucet regains a recognizable shape. The steam stops. Told you that you needed those chain cutters. Everything is connected. Everything has a purpose. Everything happens and exists for a reason. The mirror begins to clear slowly without you having to wipe it. Let's see. Dig deep into your mind to locate the source of the expression. I don't, I'm not expecting to pass either of these, but I wouldn't have heard. It belongs oh. in the new, the third decade of the current century. Enough time had passed from the failure of the revolution that, for a fleeting moment, free market economy seemed like the ultimate, uncontested way of life for our species. Okay, but that doesn't explain anything. Things were good. It was smooth sailing. People made gold and champagne-tinted interiors and facades to suit the times, calling this the new style. <laughs> but more importantly, disco happened. Disco happened. For Revachol, your city, that meant only one thing. Guillaume la Million. Guillaume de Million was mean. If it doesn't rhyme, you're not pronouncing it right. I don't speak French. Out of the dazzling swirl of disco music, in an open air, Bois de Nuit, somewhere in Revachol West, Guillaume's blonde mane appeared on the screen. He sang some bullshit. Then he made the expression. So I adopted it. Why? I feel I need to add a clicking sound when I make it. Click, click. How long ago was the new? Anything else, like who I am? Why did I become a cop? Why did I drink myself into oblivion? So I adopted it. Why? Everyone loved it. <laughs> Maybe you thought some of the stardust would rub off on you. Maybe it did. Either way, it's all gone now. Only the grimace remains. Uh, I feel I need to add a clicking sound when I make it. The click is used to spur on a horse. It also features heavily in Guillaume Lamillion's regional mega hit, Don't Worry, Your Pretty Little Head. Sometimes you like to add finger pistols to the mix, <laughs> because unlike Guillaume Lamillion, you are a police officer. It's your nifty little way to say, I'm armed and dangerous. Pew pew, finger pistols, gotcha. How long was the new? There is a vast ocean of time between right now and the expression looking good on you or anyone. Two decades, if the calendar is to be trusted. Humanity has run aground in that time. It's a different world now. The expression is a relic. Well, we're going to bring Disco back if that's the case. <laughs> Anything else, like who I am, why I became a cop, why did, why did I drink myself into oblivion? You have some understanding of the near history of Disco, plus the trivia you've picked up along the way. Episodic memory, however, remains in the dark. It may never return. You should prepare yourself for that. I guess that's it then. It doesn't have to be. You can swoon over Guillaume and his champagne cork smile whenever you want to. Maybe some of the stardust will return. Attempt to stop the expression from happening. Know the origin, no more steam. Nah, don't. We like the expression. We like the expression. I like the smile. We don't want, we don't want him to stop smiling. If anything, he needs to smile, considering all the crap he's gone through. Uh, temporary research bonus minus one logic, head in the clouds. 
Whatever happened to Guillaume de Million, who, with his amber mane and sparkling teeth, beguiled the tattered remains of the nation? While you suffered and suffered, did he dematerialize in a cloud of cocaine dust? Or did he simply stand in the corner and melt into the slendering new lines of some starlit boita de Neu 20 years ago? Spare a thought for this great... Spare a thought for his great ass too! <laughs> Or wait, maybe he became a police officer in Ravishol West. Hmm. Alright. Well, I didn't realize I need to put skill points into these, so... <clears throat> Future skill points are going to have to go in there. And I am quite far from the next one. Anything else? The tub. This is not the cleanest bathtub in the world. But it's cleaner than you are right now. Ah, that soap scum smell. It smells like life. Run your compared to you. Run yourself a bath. I want to live forever in the corpse smell. Uh, you know, memento mori and stuff. Yeah, run yourself a bath. The bathtub slowly fills with water. The water beckons. Undress, close your eyes and submerge. The water is only lukewarm, but still comforting like amniotic fluid. A few beer cans are bobbing up and down along your flanks, like sad duckies. Take the beer cans out. Now you are alone with your thoughts in the tub. But it's easier than being alone with your thoughts outside the tub. True. They're not even really thoughts, just assorted sensations. None of them acute enough to focus on. Linger the tub a little. Your fingers grow pale and are covered with tiny whirls as the water cools. What are you doing? You're not some <laughs> fat fish in a fucking aquarium. Time to get moving. Imagine something. You see the corpse. You can still smell the cadaver on you. It's going to take more than one bath to get rid of that stench. All right then. Then, houses along a narrow street. A video rental. Darkness on the planet's curvature. Get out. The water line recedes as you stand. You are cold now. Your clothes stick to your still moist skin. All right, I just want to make sure I check off my list before we sleep in for today. Find out, find a way into the secret passage, sing karaoke. Keep asking Joyce about reality. We'll do that tomorrow. Smoke on the balcony. We got to do that also tomorrow. What's this? Find the murder weapon. Oh, yeah. Well, we got that to do. Find money for guard. Uh, close the water lock on Wednesday. Ah, jeez. 20 real each day. I have 971. The bed is cold and not particularly inviting, but it's yours. The sheets look awful. Well. I don't know what you did to the mattress, but that's not going to be comfy to sleep tonight. Crawl in. The sheets feel at once coarse and clammy against your skin. The bed sags beneath your weight as you stretch out and finally close your eyes. Ooh. And then sleep does. Wait. What happened? And then sleep doesn't come. Why? Maybe it's the bed's fault. Check the pillow. Its synthetic filling has separated into hard lumps. The pillowcase smells oddly. It smells of alcohol and sweat and grease. Check the blanket. It barely covers your toes, stretching over your soft belly. This is your body here, intimate and warm, breathing. Roll over to the side. It's a little better. Colors, scenes, and half-formed phrases still litter your mind. Part of you is still trying to solve the case, isn't it? Who killed him? Who? Something to do with... What was it that the lieutenant said? Union? And it's gone again. Your thoughts lost between the slowing brain waves. No more thoughts. Fall asleep now. Your breathing steadies. A great silence washes over you until your eyelids twitch in your sleep. 
and images. Images start forming. Wait, why are we outside? Is this our dreamscape? Oh, we have no stats here. There's a huge fog here that we can't go to. This is only for the murder scene. Alright, business only. No distraction. Let's go. Wait. Why is that me? And a disco ball? Do you remember the scent of your childhood? Bloated corpse of a drunk. What is this? I remember nothing. I was born in a hospital where people usually go to die. What it says on the can, Harry. Answer the question. I remember nothing. Do you remember your wife's hand on your face? Tell me what this is. I'm not answering before you tell me who you are. You said... Who? I left. I was left. Yeah, tell me what this is. You know who I am. I'm the bad day. The one where you ask her. And then later in the streets. Wandering. It's the worst day of all time, Harry dear. And it's coming. She will hear about it on the phone. Reality will turn into a grotesque nightmare. This will be the last thing you did to her. Tell me. Do you remember the love of your life? You said who? Do you remember the warmth of her thighs? Between her legs and in her mouth? I left. I was left. Considering the thoughts from before, did I leave? Oh no, funky baby, you stayed. It was the rest of it that left. Or you just stood there, with one hand on the bottle and the other on your dick, watching it go. Tell me, where are your friends? Human beings have friends, Harry boy. Where the hell are yours? Yes, saying I don't have friends. I don't want to come back. I can get it all back. I don't think my friends want me back, but... I can get it all back, maybe, right? That's... is that too hopeful? That's probably too hopeful. But I want to try. No, it's gone. Three times gone and never coming back. You failed. You failed me. You failed Elysium. What is Elysium? Everything. The Pale and the Isolus. On the surface. The outer magnetosphere. Burning furious truth. Eight thousand years of written history. You really dropped the ball, Harry. 4.6 billion people. And you failed every single one of them. You really fucked up. I've talked to you before. I can come back for this. I've talked to you before. No, Harry. You were just talking to yourself. That's all you ever do. Even in your dreams. And the act is wearing thin. The spots of the disco ball fade around you. You'll be back in those cold snakeskins in no time. Sweating up the bed. Stinky boy. I took a shower. No, I took a bath. I'm not stinky. I can come back from this. You're not coming back from shit. Thrashing around in that high conductivity state of yours. Bumping into things and acting like a clown. Who are you kidding? I'm trying to solve. Trying to solve this case. 
My mind is tired and broken. Help me. I'm trying to solve the case. You're trying to what? I can't hear you. This is just a word dream now. Jumbled up garbage. The pictures are gone. The bed rises to meet you. A thin, sleep-like state. More glass than velvet, grinding in your head. So something is wrong. Sleep shouldn't be this bad, this dry, this unnourishing. There's something wrong with your thoughts. Some kind of new type of hangover. God, there's another type? What? No. Uh, both are good. Let's go with the first one. <laughs> oh, yes, party boy. And it's worse than the one before. Just think of the shit you saw. Here it comes, too. So soon already. A silent alarm goes off in your head, like clockwork. Barely let you sleep at all. Time to get those clothes on, Harry. Wait, it's time to wake up? Time to go to work in the shit factory. But I have so many questions. What the heck? Is this our dream? Well, uh, good sleep, Harry. Guess not, huh? The bed is still cold from the broken window, and not too inviting. But it's yours. You've earned it. No time to rest yet. Good going, buddy. Oh my god, what the hell was that? I just had the most beautiful dream. Uplifting, rejuvenating. That is absolutely false. Is that how it's going to be now when I close my eyes? Yeah, is that how it's going to be now? Yes. Wait till you see the one with the chicken. <laughs> it's going to be a good one. You feel even worse this morning than you did last night. What chick? What the hell's going on with me? What chick? You don't know. You don't know. Some bro that messed you up, it'll come to you. It always does. <laughs> right, the ex-wife. What the hell is going on with me? You mean, why are you so tired? Too tired and down to even think? It is worrying, isn't it? You can't be a detective like this. Detectives need to be able to think. Why is this happening? No, that's not it. Really, I feel super good. Why is this happening? It's just that your heart has finally pumped all the speed out of your system, Buster. Time to get some more. Don't do that. Stay strong. The hangover will wear off. You don't need to keep doing this to yourself. Wait, what is speed? No, it's the alcohol. Yeah, we don't... We're trying to keep him away from alcohol and smokes right now. Keep him clean. I need to get more of it then. If detecting is my life, opt in. No, I can take this. I am not going to go looking for speed. Are you sure? Ready to live as this pathetic shell of yourself for days? Basically, a week. Let's be honest, two weeks. Maybe three. You won't make it. Half the town will be dead by then. You will be fired. Who am I kidding? Of course I want some speed. That's a lie. I can do this without the speed. Half the town won't be dead. Suit yourself, slow, sad shell man. See how you do without your spark. Man, electrochemistry is very antagonizing, isn't he? Alright, I'm just gonna check the mirror really quick. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. It's barely covered in steam anymore. It's your face in the mirror, adorned with the expression. Yeah, we don't want to stop the expression, so we're gonna leave that alone. Okay, we have a skill point, not enough skill points. Okay. Um, this is a new day, new things are going to happen, so we are going to stop here, uh, and wow, uh, we actually reached our two hour mark for today, I'm kind of surprised myself, but yeah, let's go ahead and save and review, let's go ahead and save and review what has happened today, so, what did we do today, not much in the grand scheme of things we went around trying to ask people for money failed surprisingly bad as well as 
finding something that we didn't want to find in our clipboard. I thought it would be our badge, but that wasn't. It was memories of our ex-wife, I presume, which were so bad that I passed out. And yep, lots of uh, internalizing going on that we have yet to do. So that's going to be what our skill points are going to go into for next time, because it's not just the stats, apparently. It's also the thoughts that need points, and not all thoughts are good, it seems. And uh, yeah, that's really about it. Thank you, Kim, though, for potting off the wheels that you found, the hubcaps. Uh, that was a lifesaver. Now I can sleep here, but I also need to find my own money for the day and finding 11 real is going to be a little tough considering the scraps of money that we've been able to scavenge i don't think i got anywhere close to 20 with even including all the spending i did so this is going to be a little difficult i feel like so yeah i hope you all enjoyed that today nuggets we'll continue again next time for sure as a new day and with a new set of goals at least we got down the body last time, didn't we? So that's good. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for watching. Until the next video or stream, see you next time. Good night. Goodbye.